Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Good morning, my name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. This is Senior Sunday. We get a chance to talk to a couple of the senior students, Tyler Schroeder and also Catherine Scott. They're gonna talk to us this morning a little bit about what the church has meant to them and um, about their faith walk. And Catherine, I'm gonna start first with you. Tell me a little bit about your faith walk and how the church has helped out there. Okay, I've been going to RUMC since 2011 when my dad started working here. And I've basically done everything for my age group since then. I was really involved in WOW when I was little. And um, I had a really good elementary school small group who I still talk to those leaders today. And I accepted Christ into my life at the seventh grade confirmation retreat. And ever since then, I've had like an amazing small group who have been able to nurture me and help me grow in the faith. Tell me just a little bit about the small group. There's some folks out there that may not know what that is. Yeah, so for Roswell Student Ministries, we have crew groups on Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a group of like a couple of girls or guys in your grade and some leaders who help you um, like lead discussions and stuff. Um, My group leaders, Maggie and Rebecca, have been really good and they have poured into us so much since eighth grade when they started. I was about to say, you've known them for a long time, haven't you? Yeah. (laughs) You've also plugged in different places, not just in the youth group. Like as a youth, you've helped out in a lot of different areas too, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I've been able to help lead worship with Roswell Student Ministries in Chapel Roswell. I've been able to help with graphic design work for youth ministry. I was able to be a children's ministry intern last summer, which I loved. Has serving been a part of your Christian walk as well? That's oh. important to you? Yeah, I've loved, I've been able to go on a couple mission trips and I, last summer I was able to go to Kenya, which really, it opened my, like all of my perspectives and was able to like help me like see how we can be God to other people. Which of those events, ministries, maybe has meant the most to you in your Christian walk? I would say my small group has probably meant the most to me because of just how close we've gotten as a group and how much we've been able to build each other up over the years since we've been together since for like seven years. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, I had no idea. (laughs) I was thinking it was a year at a time. Uh, (laughs) Seven years, that's a long time. That's like not half your life, but it's a lot of of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, what are your next steps? Where are you headed from here? And how are you gonna stay connected to Christ? Next year, I'll be going to Lipscomb University, Mm -hmm. which is a Christian university, and I'm really blessed to be able to go there. And they have a lot of different ministry programs there with like small groups and chapel services. And I'm really excited to like be able to do all that. And is that how you're gonna plug in with the chapel services and different things like that there at Lipscomb? Yeah, I hope to find like a local church to serve at as well, um, because I love doing youth and children ministries and all that kind of stuff. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Well, Tyler, how about you? Tell me uh, a little bit about your faith walk and the time that you've been here. So I have, like, I grew up in the church. Um, I've been here for all my life, really. Um, I grew up, my sisters went here. 
Um, and I, you know, I just, I've been, I've been to uh, AYL confirmation. I went all the way through the uh, youth group, sixth grade. I, um, I've done a lot of, um, you know, I, I've done a lot of things with a lot of different people, and it's been a lot of fun being here. Was there a pit? particular time in your faith walk that um, that maybe was pivotal or a transition for you I went on a um, I went on a mission trip to Panama City mm -hmm. when I was in sixth or seventh grade and I think that uh, that was where I first accepted Jesus um, that I mean it was it was amazing like we helped out different people and like Catherine said we we could be God to other people and help others out is there something about a particular ministry, you mentioned missions, but that has been pivotal for you in your faith walk? Uh, really, I, missions. Okay. And, uh, you know, confirmation has been a big part of my life as well. Um, Were I you an ex-con? I was. Okay. Um, I also helped lead a couple of, um, I was a part of and I helped lead a couple of the groups and they were outstanding. It was so much fun. Well, there are some folks that may not know what ex-cons were. They might think you served time being an ex-con. <laughs> so if you will, <laughs> tell them just a little bit about what that is. So being an ex-con is helping lead a group of middle schoolers to uh, know what God looks like, what, he, what he's done within our lives, and you share our stories, and um, you know, we just, we give back to the middle schoolers and explain what God has done in, e in each of our lives. And what are your next steps in your relationship with Christ as you go after high school? So I'm headed to Mississippi State. Okay. Um, and there, I know there's a lot of different churches around Starkville, and I'm for sure going to get involved into um, a church. And, you know, there, I, there's, a, um, there's a college ministry that is right on campus, so I'll, I'll be a part of that and uh, get connected with people and Good. continue to serve. Really great. Both of you have a microphone in your hand. Is there anything that you had hoped I would ask you or hope you had said that I didn't? Or that you want to say? Last chance. You'll never have a microphone in your hand again, ever. <laughs> Hail State. <laughs> okay, there, there we go. And was it Lipscomb are go, the Lipscomb? Go Bisons. Bisons, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you all very much. I appreciate it a lot. Of course, thank you. Mm -hmm. This morning you heard from two of our seniors. You heard from Catherine and you heard from Tyler. And I'm thankful that we did. These are folks that have grown up under the ministry and guidance of this church. And when you give, and you have given and given generously, and I encourage you to continue to do that, you've given to help these young people. And I wanted you to hear from them. You've been a part of their lives in a significant way and in their walk with Jesus Christ. This morning, I wanted to, to have a, just a short devotion to go along with what they had to say. And, and this is from John chapter 17. This is the longest prayer that we have that Jesus prayed. It's all of chapter 17. And the key verse this morning that I want to read is John 17 verse 20. And this is what it says. Jesus is doing the talking here and he says, I pray for these followers, but I'm also praying for all those who will believe in me because of their teaching. Pray with me. Jesus, you open up Scripture and speak to us through Scripture. This morning, you've also spoken to us through the lives of these young people, and I am thankful. Help us to hear your voice. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. It was just about 112 years ago, I was going, it was Saturday morning, and I was going to a friend's house. I was in high school, and I was driving into his neighborhood. In the front of the neighborhood, a fellow was walking there on the street. I didn't pay much attention to him because I couldn't wait to get to my friend's house. There were a handful of us that were in a band, and we practiced most Saturday mornings at his house. He lived in the back of the neighborhood. I drove to his house, unloaded my drums, and there we started practicing. After a little while, his father opened the basement door, and he sh shouted down. He said, Tom, can you come on up here? Well, I went up upstairs, and there was the fellow that was walking in the front of the neighborhood. He was 
he was there and he pointed to my car. He said, is that your car right there? I said, yes, sir. He said, last night you drove your car through my yard and you tore up my lawn. You tore up my grass. I said, no, I didn't. He said, yes, you did. I recognize your car. I recognize the sticker on the back of it. He said, that wasn't my car and I didn't do it. Then who was it? I said, I don't have any idea, but I know it wasn't me. He got so angry. He started, yeah, he said, I'm going to call the police. I said, I didn't do it. And that's when my friend's father said, if Tom said he didn't do it, that means he didn't do it and you need to leave. <laughs> I want to tell you, that was one of the most transforming experiences I ever had. And it's transforming, especially for a teenager, for a kid, for somebody to say, if he said he didn't do it, he didn't do it. And by the way, I didn't do it. But he believed in me. That he was pulling for me. That I didn't have to prove myself through a, a thousand different trials. He said, if he said he didn't do it, he didn't do it. He was pulling for me. That's transformational. And this morning, we read, for me, one of the most transformational verses in the whole of the Bible. We read a verse that says Jesus is pulling for us. That Jesus is praying for us. That on the last night of his life, Jesus prays for, for three things. The first thing, in, in, in the beginning of John chapter 17, he prays that he, he will glorify God. He knows that the next day he's going to be nailed to the cross. And he's praying for the strength that he will glorify God in that. The second thing he prays for is he prays for the 12 disciples. And that's what it says right here. I pray for these followers. He's talking about the 12 disciples. And the third thing he prays for, he says, but I'm also praying for all those who will believe in me because of the disciples' teaching, because of their teaching. That's, that's you and me. On the last night of his life here on earth, Jesus was pulling for us. Jesus was praying for you and for me. And Hebrews chapter 7 says that Jesus is our high priest in heaven who's praying for us today. That Jesus didn't only pray for us 2,000 years ago, that he's praying for us today. He's pulling for us today. He's not waiting until we have a long series of trials where we've proven ourselves that he's praying for us today. He's pulling for us today. So what is it that he prays for us? Well, the first thing that he prays for us is joy. Joy. Verse 13, Jesus says, I'm coming to you now, but I pray these things while I'm still in the world so that these followers can have all of my joy in them. Not just a sprinkle of joy or a spoonful of joy, that all of my joy might be in, that we, I, we might have a joy that's made full. Well, Jesus knows he's about to be nailed to the cross. He's not talking about, you know, just sitting around a campfire telling jokes and they were, were laughing and happy and, and partying all day long. This is a joy that's deeper than jokes, than sitting around the campfire just having a great big old party. He's talking about a joy, a joy that is to the depth of our spirits. It's a joy that's found only in Jesus Christ. It's found in, in Christ because it's, we have a renewed spirit, a clean spirit, a clean heart, a spirit and a heart that come from him and only from him. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, 16 through 17 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. That always, that, that we practice that, that joy, that rejoicing. It says, rejoice in the Lord always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. That's our everyday practice, our every hour practice, that always we, we practice rejoicing. Well, we don't always feel like it. And that's not what it says, that we practice it anyway. And pray without ceasing. I know that, that Jesus is speaking to you and me all day, every day. And that we're aware of it. 
Do we have a, a, a discipline, dedication to paying attention to him all day, every day? Did we listen and, and talk back to him, speak back to him every day? And we pray without ceasing. That it's the, a relationship that's that, that close. It's not just done on Sunday only or, or just at the beginning of the day or just at the end of the day. Yes, that's an important part, but it's all day long. And the last thing, Scripture tells us in, in 1 Thessalonians five sixteen through 18 is in everything give thanks. Now that's not for everything give thanks because there's some things that are just plain old bad. But in everything that we might find a way of giving thanks to God and practice the giving of thanks. Practice the praying without ceasing. Practice in everything rejoicing, giving joy. That's what Jesus prayed for you and for me. And he's praying for that for us now today as well. But not only joy. Verse 17 says, Jesus says, sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. Now, what does that word sanctify mean? We don't use that word very often. It means to be set aside for a purpose. Set aside for a purpose. That we're not just supposed to be like everybody else. That it's not just whatever serves us and whatever is easiest. That our purpose is to serve God. And that's the truth. That's not always popular. It's not always the most common thing to, to, to serve God and do what he wants. To tell the truth is not always the most popular thing, nor is it the most common thing. To serve God and to serve neighbor, that's not always the most common thing. As, e as a matter of fact, the easiest thing is to, to, to point out where other people have gone wrong. And to try and deflect when we've gone wrong. To serve God means that sometimes we admit where we were wrong and we turn and we change. That we might have the mind of Christ, the spirit of, of Christ alive in us. What Jesus did on the cross is he took all those things that would destroy us. So you and I would be sanctified in truth, not in those things that would destroy us. And he rose from the grave that he might live his life through us, that we might have the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, and be set aside for the purpose, a special purpose of serving God. And the third thing that Jesus prays for, verse 21 Jesus says, Father, I pray that they can be one as you are in me and I am in you. I pray that they can also be one in us. Then the world will believe that you sent me. He prays for our unity. And in this prayer, he doesn't just pray for that one time. He prays for the, our unity that we may be one in him four times. Why? So the world will believe that Jesus was sent from God. He prays for our unity. Well, about the easiest thing in the world is to divide and not multiply. To look and see who, who's us and who's, who's them. To look and see who's higher and who's lower. The easiest thing in the world is to try and separate sheep from goats, but that's not your job and mine. As a matter of fact, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near, that you and I were made to come together as the body of Christ to come together and encourage, to build up, to strengthen one another. Not to divide, but to multiply. That the world will believe that Jesus was sent by God. He's praying for you that we might be made one. This morning, it may be that... Um, 
the easiest thing in the world for you has been able to, to, to pick us and them. And you didn't know Jesus was praying for it. Well, it's transformational. It can change your heart. And it may be that you want to receive his, his prayer today for unity. Or it may be that um, you didn't know you were set aside for a purpose. And that you've been instead going along with the crowd, doing the thing that's most popular or maybe the thing that's most common. And that it's time it's time to turn, to ask for forgiveness and allow Jesus to live his life through you, to receive the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ, that you might be sanctified, set aside for God's purpose. Or it may be that this morning your joy hasn't been, his joy hasn't been made full in you, that you've not known that joy instead what you've been focusing on is, is a hard and difficult time and you've had anything but joy. Well, I want to pray with you and I want to do it right now. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, joy, your joy to be made full, it requires the power of your spirit and that we practice your spirit meeting with our spirit that we rejoice always. Jesus, in and through your church. We have much to be thankful for. You've been using this church for over 150 years to change lives. And that's reason to give thanks. It's reason to celebrate. It's reason to, to celebrate in joy. It's reason enough to know that you're praying for us and pulling for us, that we listen. That we have a discipline, a discipline dedication to paying attention to you and we, we pray without ceasing. We listen for your voice all day, every day. And we talk to you all day, every day. But that requires practice. Give us the strength the strength of your Holy Spirit to practice that praying without ceasing and that in everything we might give thanks, that your joy might be made full in us. Jesus, I know that um, rather than practicing thanks, very often we like to grumble and think and talk about how things aren't going our way and we become an anxious people rather than a thankful and joyful people. Breathe your spirit on us this day, that in everything we might give thanks, we might pray without ceasing. And because of your prayer, this day we might rejoice always. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. 
He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.